What a man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. What a man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. I'm a bitch, I'm a lover, I'm a child, I'm a mother. You, you ought to know. Oh. Hey, what's going on, BC? I'm just doing some laundry. Um, so... I was watching a video today of Chance, also known as Concert Buddy. He w dropped a video talking about his uh, 90s pressings of albums. Like, a lot of them were OGs. Or actually, I think all of them were OGs. Um, so, I commented of one off the top of my head that I knew that I had that was original from the 90s. And... Um, I was out and about and I said I'd have to when I get home I'll check through my collection and check out my 90s original or at least pressed in the 90s collection and actually came up with uh, around a dozen so I was actually shocked a lot of these um, there's uh, some singles in there promotional singles and um, and a few full-length albums um, some I'm not sure if they're actually original pressings, but I did get them in the 90s, which as many of us know, 90s vinyl was all but dead at the time. So um, it was cool to be able to get these at the time. So I'm going to go in alphabetical order and uh, to tribute Chance, let's do this. Oh wait, that's plagiarism. I don't want to do that. I don't have any kind of editing effects to... I don't have like a... You know, you know what I mean. So, anyway, let's just get to it. First one that I got is a single from h Specs Twin called Come to Daddy. Uh, kind of just hard, hard techno. It's almost metal with... Metal techno in a way. Um... And if you ever see the video for this, it's great around Halloween. It is really spooky. So this is Aphex Twin. Uh, just has a couple different mixes on there. But yeah, 12-inch single. I played this once when I was DJing. Doesn't work well for the dance floor. <laughs> Next. This one does work good for the dance floor. Another 12-inch single. Um, late 90s. Uh, this is Bram Van 3000. And uh, this song is Drinking in L.A. Cool song. Uh, cool vinyl, too, but it's on the side. It's a nice clear blue, uh, light blue. Um, and so when you're trying to find a track, it's really difficult because you can't tell which side the the track is starting. <laughs> so uh, Brand Band 3000, kind of poppy trip hop stuff. Uh, I want to say that was around 96, 98. Uh, this wasn't a promo item, but it's a white label single. Um, this is a uh, Twisted Nails of Fate from Cradle of Filth, black metal. Um, um, red vinyl, white label, nothing on it. Uh, and there's like a remix of Black Metal on here. So, uh, not the song Black Metal from Venom, but just of uh, the uh, uh, Twisted Nails. Um, it's okay. I just still keep it in my collection if I ever feel the need to listen to some Cradle of Filth. This one's special to me. This is like one of the first promo singles I ever got. Uh, this is Unholy Love from Doro Pesh. Um, I was working at the warehouse of the record store chain Harmony House that I talk about ad nauseum. Um, and they had this lying around, so I was able to snatch it and uh, actually got to see her on this tour for her uh, album Doro um, and got to meet her and even got to sign it. Oh, she was really nice. Um, the album, it's on Mercury Records, the album 
was executive produced by Gene Simmons and associate producers Tommy Thayer. Keep in mind, this is 1990, so Tommy Thayer was in the KISS realm even back then. So, uh, Doro, Unholy Love, good song. Next is another promo single, or, well, it's an EP uh, sampler. Uh, this is the samples for uh, Fear Factory's uh, remanufacture. Um, I mean, this is just rare that it was coming out on vinyl, just even this, um, out on Roadrunner Records. Um, they're just remixes of stuff from Demanufacture. Um, it's actually pretty good. I actually, I listened to this earlier and, uh, yeah, it sounds like 1997 on this, uh, and then, uh, on, when the next album came out obsolete, they did an in-store at a place called Rock of Ages in Garden City, Michigan, and my buddy that was working for Roadrunner saw me in line and he got me in before the in-store actually happened, so I get to um, you know, go one on one with uh, the guys in Fear Factory. Really super cool guys. Uh, I believe that night they were uh, playing or they were opening for uh, Slayer. Um, yeah, 1998. That was cool. But that record's from 1997. Uh, another promo single I got. This though, this was from a few years earlier. Um, I was, when I mentioned earlier, I was DJing for about eight months back in '98, and. Uh, Another friend of mine from Roadrunner Records found out I was DJing, so they sent me this uh, 12 inch single from uh, for uh, Mo ah, what is it? Millennium, that's it <laughs> from Frontline Assembly. Uh, this is when they were kind of going through the, the 90s aggro industrial with the, the guitars and stuff. Um, it's pretty good, it's got a you know, the, the main no, it's got three remixes of um millennium and then uh trans time on here um promo single frontline assembly 94 i want to say yeah 1994 but i got it in 98 i guess it was just hanging around in the office uh, another single uh industrial um and haven't really heard of these guys in a while but uh gravity kills another uh, kind of industrial, more in the vein of Nine Inch Nails, you know, uh, kind of not easy listening, but easily digestible. Um, actually, this is the front right here. Um, but yeah, this one got some MTV play. Uh, this was from 96, so this was actually hanging around in the office too. <laughs> I got this when I was DJing. You know, you mentioned uh, label people that you DJ and they just send you stuff. It was great. I had a huge box, actually, from uh, TVT Records. Uh, I, man, I really wish I could remember her name, but she, yeah, she sent me this huge box from Chicago. I had all this vinyl. I had a bunch of KMFDM singles in there, 12 inch singles, and I ended up selling them when I was unemployed uh, several years ago. I And I really regret selling them, but, you know. When you need money. So next, this was the one that kind of spawned my idea for this. Um, from 1997, I actually bought this the, uh, when it came out um, because it was just unusual. This was coming out on vinyl, but this is American Psycho from the Misfits. Uh, this was the return of the Misfits uh, with Michael Graves on vocals instead of um, Glenn Danzig, so, um, and I think when this came out, I must have paid, I don't know, 17 bucks for this thing, um, it's going for a lot more now, uh, there's a vinyl on it, this is when they were briefly on Geffen Records, they were actually on a major label, so, it's actually a pretty good record, I, I like this one, I liked it better than Famous Monsters, the following one, and what do we got here, oh, um, I got this in the late 90s, so I don't know if this is an OG that was just hanging around or a reissue in the late 90s, uh, but that's hopefully, I think I could hold it this way. This is Far Beyond Driven from Pantera. Um, 
yeah, I got this, like I said, probably 98, 99, when I was working at the record store. Um, probably one of their heaviest albums. Actually, no, the next one was even heavier, but this one did really well on the charts. I think it even debuted at number one, which was very unusual in the 90s, having a metal band um, hit the charts that well. So, Far Beyond Driven, Pantera, 1994, could be an OG probably a repress but i did get it in the 90s next one is the next album from pantera great southern trunk great southern trend kill it's sunday night and i'm tired um so uh this was the next album this one was actually pretty brutal um i did get this one when it did come out um it's it's great. I didn't get the reissues that came out in the last couple of years. I can't remember if these are split into two records. Or not this is a single disc on the US. But uh yeah. Ninety six Pantera, Great Southern Train Crew. Uh this again, you mentioned that you DJ, uh my buddy that was working at Warner Brothers uh got me and I believe this is an import but uh, gave me a promo version of Fat of the Land from Prodigy. Great album, double disc. Um, kind of that hard techno. Um, actually saw these guys on this tour, and it was amazing. I thought the balcony at the State Theater, now known as the Fillmore in Detroit, I thought the balcony was going to fall down because it was just moving a whole lot. So, uh, what was this, 96? Yeah, 96. Neighbors. So, uh, Prodigy, Fat of the Land. And there's a pair here. Uh, this is where I'm thinking that, God, I love having dogs. Um, uh, this might be a reissue, because I got it in the late 90s. Um, this is Rage Against the Machine, the debut, because uh, this came out in 92 and I got this in the late 90s uh, but again vinyl really was wasn't get a whole lot pressed at that time but uh, we all know this record classic killing in the name of bomb track and then uh, at the same time I did get their follow-up evil empire um, late 90s um, I didn't get this when it came out, but I think I got it around 98 uh, for when I was DJing at the time. So it's kind of a continuation of the first record, Evil Empire. And this one, I definitely know this is an OG copy because this band didn't really go much further. <laughs> I mean, they put out one album after this. this is from 1990. This is... Uh, Here Comes Trouble by Scatterbrain. Uh, this was the kind of a continuation of the hardcore band uh, Ludacrist. And uh, with injected with a ton of humor in this. Uh, if those of a certain age, like myself, watched Headbangers Ball at the time, uh, there's a song called Don't Call Me Dude on there. That was from this. Um, great record. Saw them a couple times on this tour. Those guys were just hilarious. They were great. Um, cool stuff and the great uh, Robert Williams artwork the guy who did the, the Guns N' Roses of Appetite for Destruction the original cover so that's it so there's my 13 so um, I'm sure a lot of you do already um, subscribe to Chance's channel check it out uh, I'll put a link to his channel in the description and uh really good guy he was actually out here not too long ago to see uh norman maslov mazzy and so in honor put on my high voltage shirt so all right you guys have a wonderful week and we will talk to you later